Hi, I'm Alistair Allen from Make Magazine, here with Sam Ortega from NASA. Hi, good to have you with us. Thanks, Alistair. Glad to be here. Cool. Um, so you made a point today in your talk to say that it was your space agency. Well, maybe not mine, because I'm British, but like the rest of the audience, perhaps. And uh, that, that technology was uh, the driver for, for new space exploration. Do you want to take a talk a bit about that? Absolutely. So you're absolutely correct in the sense that it's not, I, I just get to work there. I get to participate in the space exploration program, but it does belong to the general public. It is you know, the, the US citizens space program. Yep. And so what we're doing a big push is to get them aware of what the opportunities are as makers, as innovators, as hackers, come up with ideas and their solutions. We, we don't want that to be an untapped resource. We realize that there's a lot of technology there that we could be taking advantage of in our space exploration endeavors. And so that's where we're trying to reach out and make them aware of not only the opportunities that they have to engage and be a part of the space exploration program, but also be more aware of what technologies we have available for them to use out there. We have software portals for free software or, and, and software that they can license. You know, we have patent portals. So all these areas, there's technology that's there that they can take advantage of. So where do you see the technologies, the tools of the maker movement turning up inside NASA? So obviously we have a lot of different areas that are, technologies that have been around for a while, 3D additive manufacturing. Many people will be saying, oh my God, that's just new, that's new stuff. No, it's not new stuff. It's been around for, since Maker Faire first started. We had, three, we had three people here the first time here um, that had additive manufacturing printers. And so we see that technology coming in readily and being used not only at the industrial level, but also at the, at the platform level, at the uh, desktop level, people are becoming and using that technology. We're, we're 3D printing rocket engines right now and, and testing them and using them for some of our rockets. It's not the big rockets, but it's the smaller ones that we use for smaller payloads. And, and to me, that is just fascinating to see that technology come in, as well as any of the other areas, whether it's new electronics, new ways of coding, using Arduinos to control our, our uh, rocket systems and our payloads, um, using 3D manufacturing to print not only the CubeSat, which are small satellites, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, but the, the uh, PCBs that are used inside them to control them. So all of the control systems, all of that can now be just, basically we could print it on the space station and have an astronaut throw it out and put it into orbit. That's cool. I gotta agree, that is cool. So, so you talked about multiple opportunities to be involved in your space program and this space program. And uh, you especially mentioned NIAC, is it? That's the crazy scientists, crazy uh, ideas agency. Do you want to talk about what they're doing? It is. So the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program, it's www.nasa.gov slash NIAC NIAC. And what we're doing there is we're looking for that very seedling ideas of what we could use for future technologies, whether it's going to be um, a new method of technology for usage for manufacturing, whether it's going to be a concept for space exploration. You know, one of the ones that we recently mentioned is the concept of being a uh, design concept built for fabricating a submarine that could be used to explore the seas of, of the t moon Titan. And I, you know, to me, that is just totally awesome. And especially as we go off, we want to explore the seas of Titan. We want to explore Europa. You know, we want to go off and do more exploration on the, on the surface of Venus which has a high pressure, high temperature environment, caustic with you know, sulfuric acid, how do you get something to survive any, any longer than 10 hours at max? And so those technologies were, are the things we're looking for to be able to do that type of exploration. That really sounds great. That's uh, it's dream come true territory. Um, so you're the program manager for the Centennial Challenges, of course, um, and you were talking that you want to have about six challenges open at any one time. Do, what, what are the current challenges? How can people get involved? How can people like potentially win large sums of money, I guess? Right, so currently we have, th we have three active challenges as of today. Yep. Um, we have a CubeQuest challenge, which is focused on the pro propulsion systems and the communication systems of small CubeSats. We have our sample return robot challenge, which was uh, an autonomous robot, no GPS, no compass, that can go out, collect samples, and bring them back to a single point. And then we also have our Mars Ascent Vehicle Challenge, which is a robotic system that would collect, would pick up those collection of samples already collected, put them in a rocket, deploy the rocket to a vertical stage, and launch it and back into uh, the planetary orbit. So those three challenges are what we're looking at today. And then we're looking to roll out some new challenges focused on humanoid robotics. We're looking at advanced manufacturing. And actually, the advanced manufacturing challenge we'll be announcing here at Maker Faire here in the, the Bay Area. So we're very excited about announcing that on this Saturday. And then we also have one that's been, uh, we're looking at a challenge to possibly be focused on tissue engineering. And so the space biology aspects, especially if you're going to be doing a long-term space exploration venture where you're not going to have doctors, hospitals, you have to be able to handle everything on your own there on the spaceship. 
That's really cool. So you also mentioned uh, some other smaller challenges, the uh, the soft hatch, hatch challenge that that um, people can get involved in in a much sort of more uh, more ready level. It's like they don't have to be massively expert in a, a whole number of fields. So do you want to briefly mention that, perhaps? Yeah, you're right. Because oftentimes I hear that, oh well, you know, I'm a I, I'm I'm not I'm just an artist. I can't be a space explorer, and and that is so untrue because. Those are the people, that's why we come to Maker Faire. We're looking for the artistic, te technology, artistically creative people to solve these problems. And that's what we get here when we do this. So when you go to tinyurl slash soft hatch, there is a challenge out there that if we are attaching a uh, inflatable module to the outside of a space station or to the outside of a planetary um, habitat, we can get that inflated out and the astronaut can open up the hatch from the, ha from the habitat and walk into the inflatable module. How do they get outside? That doorway, because we want that to be fully collapsed into a small pouch, a small bag, it, ex it expands out. Well, now the hatch has to be able to be soft. And how do you make that work so that it's airtight and that you can open it r easily when you're wearing EVA, you know, astronaut gloves and everything like that? Yeah. And so that's what the challenge is. It's $15,000. It's open until the middle of June. And we're looking for people to explain their idea of how they would create a soft hatch for us, what materials they would use, what is, what is the basic design concept of it, and then we're going to go back and look at those and uh, judge them, rack them, stack them, and then award some prize money for that. And you don't actually have to build the hatch. You don't have to build the hatch. We just want your idea. That's really awesome. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you.